That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about The Many Saints of Newark, directed by Alan Taylor, which of course is the prequel to uh, the celebrated television series from HBO, The Sopranos, uh, which ran for six seasons, 86 episodes from 1999 through 2007. Uh, at last is finally here. I have been told that I have to give a uh, brief and condensed uh, overview of this because Joseph did not see this film and is not interested in talking about it. It is uh, released theatrically and simultaneously on HBO Max, much to the chagrin of showrunner David Chase, on October 1st, 2021. Well, just to give the people a little something. So, I, um, I wasn't interested in watching it because I'm not familiar with The Sopranos. My only experience with The Sopranos is I was dating someone who was into it mm -hmm. and he lived in New York and he had me fly out on a weekend when the finale was airing. So this was 2007? Yes. Mm -hmm. And we had to watch it. So you have seen an episode. I saw the final episode. Okay. Um, but you explained to me that this is sort of the makings of Tony Soprano. Like, that's what the story that's is. That's what it's been credited as, but to me it feels more of, like, the environment that was happening more than it is about Tony Soprano at Would all. you liken it to the film The White Ribbon? Yeah. there. Oh, that's, um... <laughs> whoa, that's a comparison. Uh, I just want to show people that I do know uh, about more than just stupid movies. That um, film was uh, a, a little more ambiguous uh, about what was happening than this film is. All I know is it's set uh, in 1967 and 1971. Yes. And that there are the Imperioles. No, no. God. The Multisantis. And the Sopranos. And the Sopranos. But they're all part of the same organized crime outfit. Yeah, and also... But there's some, like... Part of the same family, too. Oh, they're all related. And marriages and... Okay. Mm -hmm. So some things happen, some people get taken down, some people get killed. And then at the end, there, and th there's a funeral and Tony Soprano pinky swears about something. And then the theme song for the TV show plays. That's all you took from my explanation. Yep. Uh huh. Um, so go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So it starts. Uh, we're we're drifting over uh, a graveyard as we hear various voices, and you'll notice the uh, headstones of some characters, and we rest upon uh, Christopher Moltisani, who of course was played by Michael Imperioli in the series, and he's narrating the film. Uh, and of course, if you're familiar with The Sopranos, and he tells you right away, he is the nephew of Tony Soprano, who was later strangled by him. And so this really is kind of, it, I want to say saga, but it doesn't feel like a saga. Uh, this prequel doesn't, at least, at least compared to the series, uh, about kind of things that happened between the Moltisantis and the Sopranos that would cause the tension and rifts that uh, were kind of woven into the television series. May I, um, before you get into a detailed uh, replay, you have watched every episode of The Sopranos. Yes. It was a big deal in my house. But I was in ninth grade when this series started coming out. So. so, just asking questions, what about this film you just watched? Like, like, was there anything that really stuck out to you as someone who's seen all of the TV show? It was, you know... Cause like plot points. Pl uh, no. <laughs> I... So, yes, to be honest, I, I think this is for uh, aficionados of the series because... You know, as a because I was a casual purveyor because my parents loved it and I did like it. And I, but you know, what I who I loved from the series was Lorraine Bracco as Dr. Melfi, uh, his therapist. And of course, she's nowhere to be seen in this mix. Uh, but there are interesting things in it, there are people that I really like in it. Uh, talk about uh, the people you like. So, I'm not talking any more about the plot. Well, I don't know that's necessary. So, this isn't a spoiler review, technically. Well, not really. Well, I mean, you know, anyway, it, it you can do what you feel comfortable with. We meet in 1967, uh, Tony Soprano is, you know, basically in elementary school, causing trouble peripherally. His father, played by Joe Bernthal, goes to prison for five years, and it kind of uh, allows uh, the uncle he's closest to, uh, Dickie Moltisano, played by... Uh, Moltisanti, played by Alessandro Nivola, to kind of take him under his wing, and there he kind of sees some, uh, some shit go down, if you will. Uh, the Moltisanti's patriarch, Hollywood Dick, played by Ray Liotta, comes back from uh, the motherland with uh, Dickie's new stepmother, th this young 20-something uh, Giuseppina, played by uh, Michaela De Rossi, who doesn't speak any English. Uh, what does she speak? Italian. Oh. 
They're from Italy. Anyhow, uh, he kind of has the hots for her and she's being abused by Ray Liotta and he confronts his dad and says, I watched you treat my mother this way, you won't do it again. They get have a, an altercation and he accidentally kills his dad. Meanwhile, How? He, he slams his head very violently into his stomach. Accidentally wheel. slams his head very violently. He beats him up, but he doesn't mean intend to kill him. Okay, that makes sense. He accidentally kills him. Uh, meanwhile, in the background of this are the 1967 uh, Newark race riots going on. And to me, the most fascinating character was Harold, played by Leslie Odom Jr. Uh, Who we know from? See his music. Uh, I believe he was just nominated for an Oscar, though, in uh, playing Sam Cooke in One Night in Miami. Oh. Uh, between this and One Night in Miami, I have to say, like, I'm... I'm I'm into Leslie Odom Jr. Uh, to me, he's the best part of this film. You should marry him. <sighs> Go ahead. Okay. Where was I? Uh, so he make, he stages, uh, he burns his father's body to bits in a factory that his dad owned to make it look like this just kind of was a byproduct of that going on. But meanwhile, he has to kind of fully take over the numbers racket uh, that the Moltisantis are in charge of. And... Uh, Odom Jr.'s Harold plays one of his runners, but has to flee because of a, a warrant. Uh, it's also notable that Harold has the hots for uh, Giuseppina, who is now, with the death of Hollywood Dick, become the uh, mistress. Is she a pretty lady? Yeah, she's a young, beautiful thing. Okay. Uh, that he puts her up, and her side story is she wants to be own a beauty parlor because her mother taught her that trade. Uh, but she has an affair with Harold, and because of that after she gets the beauty parlor, she makes the mistake of telling Dickie about it, uh, and he gets so upset that he murders her. Uh, when she has the affair with the black man, does she still not speak English? She speaks better by then. Okay. Uh, oh, she, because like four years have passed. Yes. Got yes. it. Yes, because you skip ahead to 1971, and then we have, of course, Michael Gandolfini playing uh, the role originated by his father, uh, who really doesn't have a lot to do, although there is a likeness to him. Instead, it's trying to show... He looks like his dad, you're saying. At times, yeah. Oh. Uh, he, He's not cute then. James Gandolfini was cute when he was young. Okay. Um, in that... Big, in that not cute way? <laughs> in that big meaty way. Uh, anyhow, uh, Vera Farmiga, I think, is a lot of fun playing uh, Tony Soprano's mother. Because uh, as you know from the television... If you saw the television series played by Nancy Marchand, she's this manipulative bitch. Uh, Ooh, and she... Burn. She is... Uh, it, it's made to show that she's just this kind of viciously unhappy woman that has some mental health issues. And her, Same. Her, her son is trying to... Uh, he is clued into the fact that her doctor recommended pills and she got angry and stopped seeing her doctor. And he's trying desperately to get his mother on this medication, which I think is very depressing. But uh, anyhow, that's going on. In 71, uh, Leslie Odom Jr. comes back. He decides that he's going to run the first black... Sh chapter of running numbers, which of course puts him at odd with the uh, Moltisantis. Uh, meanwhile, there's Corey Stahl playing Junior Soprano. The redhead guy from Minnesota? What? Corey Stahl? Yes. He's bald. Oh, no. From House of Cards. He's from House of Cards. Who's the handsome redhead from Minnesota? The handsome redhead from Minnesota? Eric Stolls. That's who I thought you were talking about. Anyway, Corey Stoll is Junior Soprano, who is a very uh, integral character to the series, especially the uh, first couple of uh, series, uh, really doesn't like Dickie and puts out a hit on him. So Dickie is dead at the end. So the, the final shot is at the funeral of uh, him. And I'm trying to think of what else is notable to talk about. Uh, you, you see a lot of other characters that you recognize. There's, you know, Janice Soprano as a pot-smoking teenager and... Uh, Polly Walnuts and uh, Pussy and, and, you know, if you're a fan of the series, your ears will prick up hearing all those. Um, I haven't watched any of these things in like 14 years, so I, I feel very vague about how, uh, remembering how Were some there of them gay people? No, they're not. Uh, Billy Magnuson uh, also plays my friend. Them. My friend. Uh, he, but he's uh, a racist in this. So that that's kind of my, my ultimate takeaway is I really could have cared less about any of these people um, and the way that they, the, how it was generally accepted, the way that they behaved and the things they believed in are dead with them and is just fine with me. Because uh, <laughs> the, the most violent death is of um, Harold's 
uh, best friend where they take what's the uh, tool you called where you tighten the lug nuts uh, an Allen wrench an, no no it's like the the motor you know people already make fun of us for being gay and now we don't know the name of a tool uh, yeah what do you tighten you can, a lug nut you can google it and uh, well it'll just be a picture of well it. he has a very violent death with uh, that piece of machinery how well they take it they jam in his mouth and all his teeth get mashed out. Yeah, uh, you see it? Yeah. It's oh, is this rated R? Of course. Oh. This is about the mafia. Uh, I would hope it would be. It's not a Marvel movie about the mafia, so it has to be. Rated I would R. watch that. I would. I'd watch a PG Marvel. Like how, movie how Venom Marvel. is the most complex character, but we're going to give him a PG 13 rating. Okay. Uh, yeah, so to me, it's. I gravitated towards. I would. I think I was anxious the whole time because I thought that Harold would die and I'd have to see because you know it's about these people that we see in 86 episodes later on so I'm like oh I don't remember anybody black and prominent in that so uh, of course we're gonna have to watch him get tortured and die so I, it's nice at least that he kind of uh, is given his own way to go but yeah other than that I, I really don't feel like if this is how you're starting out with the Sopranos I don't know how you would be motivated to go watch the series, but oh, if you're but if you're a fan of the series, I, I can see how there are nuggets here worth seeing. Um, you know, David Chase, who created The Sopranos, uh, has created some of uh, a lot of notable television, including Northern Exposure, Kolchak, The Rockford Files. Uh, Kojak? Kolchak. Oh. Uh, Kojak. Uh, Telly Savalas. Yeah, not Telly Savalas. I've referenced him a lot in the past few months. Yes, you have. Uh, and now I don't know why. I don't know why either. Who did I say looks like Telly Savalas? Somebody in some movie. Um, I know that he's very upset that this is also... Like, he wouldn't have made this project if he knew that it would simultaneously scream on HBO Max. But the whole series was on HBO. So I don't know how that really makes much sense. And I, I think that the whole series uh, encapsulate all together... You is, should call him and talk to him. Okay, you're bored. Okay, that's all I have to say. I would give this uh, two and a half out of five. Oh, so you didn't mind it? I didn't mind it. It's not bad. It's just... <laughs> I hope people enjoy this review. We're really trying. I'm very itchy today and... Itchy Palante. It, it... <laughs> something bit me all over. Anyway. Of course. That was something. Goodbye. Bye.